I'd like to, to speak to that because working with Tim Farnsworth, who is trained in assessment, and I'm trained as a sociolinguist or applied linguist interested in the sociopolitical issues, he and I were a really interesting team because I would ask these questions. And as a matter of fact, in our training sessions, we noticed that a couple of things. Our department, Applied Linguistics, has a large number of graduate students from Asian-speaking backgrounds. And we noticed that the Raiders had a particular level of forgiveness for these Asian pronunciations. We're very used to them. We're very used to teaching these students. And the undergrads would sometimes say, oh, I didn't understand anything they said. Or other graduate students that were Raiders who weren't familiar with those accents or those ways of speaking would rate them very, very low. So part of bringing this awareness and making aware to the people who are very used to those accents as you know how other people may perceive them um, was something that we struggled with in, in defining and kind of bringing to everyone's awareness. And the other example I have is of um, this overwhelming forgiveness for male speakers of Southern European countries. <laughs> because most of the Raiders were women and these speakers, these very romantic, um, very charming, very good looking speakers from the Southern European countries would come in and charm the Raiders and everyone suddenly forgets to rate and afterwards says, oh yeah, he was just wonderful. Yeah. And, and then kind of discussing sort of that problem too, which touches on a lot of the things that we've been talking about in this conference and some of the most recent um, you know, talks that preceded us. But I, I don't know that there's an answer to that, um, but it's something that the coordinators are very aware of and trying to kind of look at and manage uh, the trends that are happening and the ways that the Raiders are describing these accents. But it's problematic too because um, as uh, Stephanie Lindman just mentioned, we have these automatic perceptions of a way that someone speaks when you see them, even if it doesn't really match the way that they're speaking. So it's, you know, a problem. I don't know how else to. Having been a speak reader and then part of the norming for the top, I'm very well aware of this, but one of the things we're not talking about is good teaching. And sometimes good teaching overrides all of these issues. So having watched these students and also taught them in, in these oral skills classes here, if people use a lot of audio visuals, they use the board, they face the audience, they ask questions, they are always checking for comprehension, that makes all the difference in the world. So sometimes that training is good teaching, and it's not just accent. So let's not forget good teaching. If I could be. Yes, it works. It works. No, okay, I just can't hear that. I so I think the big, big issue here is motivation, which is so big in, in language learning and education. And so the idea of wanting to understand someone and get beyond the accent. So I think a lot of the students might get lazy and they need a well-presented platter of all the terms and the perfect uh, version and with perfect English. Well, yet, the mo if the motivation is there that I want to understand the concept and combined with a good teaching uh, method, then I think a lot more can be understood. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay. So yeah, um, two recent questions from audience. Uh, I I mean comments actually. Uh, I want to say that um, maybe we can like put uh, two raiders, one from one who has the background knowledge of that field, and one who does not have, and then uh, compare these two. Because if the one who has the background knowledge rates more. You will say, okay, this guy has good ability of communicating, but maybe he is not a good uh, English speaker in terms of accent. And so uh, the point that I'm, I'm trying to bring up is that um, sometimes the the uh, way that they communicate and as you said, like the audiovisual or, or stuff that they have and the the, the, the use, uh, the, the uh, use of background knowledge that audience has, uh, that
that would help a lot in uh, understanding what's going on. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, and thank you for that. Uh, we were we had a discussion a little bit uh, outside about like professors and uh, are all professors good teachers? <laughs> and, because most of them are, they, 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 they are aware of the content, 100% uh, no doubt on that, but uh, they cannot communicate. So, uh, and uh, I mean, when you, when you are in the uh, class, you, okay, I got like nothing, and then I need to uh, study myself or stuff. So, yeah, those are two different uh, uh, level of, either you can communicate this content, or you are a good uh, English speaker, and either you, you know the content, and you can uh, uh, like transfer to the audience that you have. All right, so I think we'll stop there. Thank you so much to the panel.